So he says, I feel very pity on these people. They are the most pitiable people. There is uh, this story about the thief. There was one thief. He was a professional thief. Who whole dynasty were thieves, forefathers were also thieves. He was born in the thief family. So right from childhood they were trained. Because in India we had this caste system. If somebody is an Ayurvedic doctor, then the children will also become Ayurvedic doctor. <coughs> so because the father was a thief, the son also becomes a thief and learns all the formula from the father. So father was training his son to become a thief. So he told his son that, my dear son, just remember one thing, that if you see some sadhu speaking on Harikatha, avoid him completely. Otherwise your business will collapse. <laughs> <laughs> so of course in India we give respect to the father and if father is giving advice, we have to take it very seriously. So when the boy grew up, father died, he became a very famous thief. And one day he was walking outside a village under a tree when Sadhu was sitting and he was speaking and village people gathered, they were listening to him. So when he came near, he realized that my father said, I should not hear anything from these Sadhus, they talk some dangerous things. So before he realized this, one sentence went into his ears and the sentence was that these devas, demigods, they don't cast shadows like we cast shadow. Okay, there is a light and there is a shadow. But the demigods, the angels don't make shadows. If they are standing, then you will not see their shadow. They don't touch the ground. They are always at least six inches above because they are very afraid of dust. They are allergic to dust. So they don't want to catch that. <coughs> and because light passes through them, they are called Deva. Deva means shining. So they are light. So light does not make a shadow. So they don't make shadow. But after that he closed his ears with his fingers and he walked away from there. So then later on he did a big theft in the palace of the king. Because he was very expert. So, and he got big booty from there. But he also knew that because I have stolen from the king's palace, now the king will try his best to catch me. And because he is a thief, he is also known to people that he is a thief. So they will come searching for me. And usually what happens that in India when they steal or make theft or decoratory, then first thing they do is that they go and worship Durga. Because there are also devotees in Durga. They are also pious people, they do charity. So these days if somebody robs a bank, then they go to a hotel. Right? They will drink, they will dance, they will enjoy. But in olden days the Indian thieves were different. <laughs> so they will go to a temple, they will give a big feast and make a big offering. So of course that catches attention of the people. So he did this and he lied very low. Not moving out anywhere, not showing that he has got this big booty with him. So king of course was very angry when he heard that there is theft in his palace and this is a disgrace because how he can protect others if he cannot protect himself. So he called the police people that you have to catch this thief otherwise you will be in trouble. So the police went all around. They did not get any clue. 
So the king called them and said that if you don't catch the thief in one week, I'm giving you time, then I will hang you up. The king is absolute, they can do anything. So these people became very scared. Now it is their, their life is at stake. So one of them was very smart. So he went from village to village trying to talk to people and find out who is a good thief in that area. And he came to know. This Durga Das. He is a thief. <laughs> so he went around, he did some research and he came to know that yes, he is a great devotee of Durga. So he knew that if he simply goes and knocks and talks to him, he will deny. Him. And he will say, you can search me, you can beat me, you can take me, but actually I have not stolen. So he thought of an intelligent plan. He came at night dressed as Durga. <laughs> <laughs> and at midnight he knocked at his door. <coughs> and he said, Durga Das, I am the Devi personified here. Come out. So Durga Das heard it and he was shocked that Devi has appeared. So he came out and he saw Devi was standing there. So he says, Durga Das, why you have not made any offering to me? I know that you have done a big theft in the palace. So why you are not visiting my temple and making any offering? So Durga, this Durga Das, he was very clever, he was not an ordinary thief and he said, Mata, I have not done any theft. And you know that every time I do something, I come to your temple and do some offering. So why you are saying like this? So Devi said, don't tell lies. I know everything and I know that you have stolen from the palace and the money is in your house under the ground and if you don't come and make an offering I will curse you. So now the guy is becoming doubtful and scared because he has stolen and you know that when somebody has done some crime they are very scary inside. Outside they may put up a tough face, but inside they are very scared. So for a second he thought that I cannot escape because this is Devi speaking and she knows I better accept, otherwise she is going to curse me. But when he was thinking like this, he saw that from the moonlight there was a shadow. <laughs> so he immediately remembered that this cannot be Devi because I heard <laughs> that the Devi and Devas they don't make shadow, <laughs> they don't cast shadows. So then he became strong inside and he says, Mother if you want to curse your child you can curse but I am telling from my heart that I have not done anything like this. So obviously this police guy realized that if he was a thief, by now he would have accepted. And if he is so firm, so that means he is really not a thief. So that's why his life was spared. <coughs> Just by one sentence. So when this police guy left, and of course the thief understood that this is just a you know, bait to catch me. Then he realized how important it is to hear Krishna Katha. He says, one statement saved my life. 
otherwise the king is obviously going to hang me you know <laughs> so then he he gave up this and he went to that village again and he searched for the sadhu and he fell at his feet and he said please i want to hear more things you saved my life by one sentence and he said what sentence and he told him the whole thing so this is what he says that i am very much pitiable to these people who do not want to hear krishna gatha because they will keep on suffering in this material world if you don't hear about krishna then what will you do in your life except being miserable there is nothing else in this material world except misery for short periods there is little relief like sometimes when people are punished they don't punish them all the time especially in india they have a system that if you commit a crime some big crime then police takes you in remand that is before you are presented in the court so taking on the remand means that you are under the police custody and they will inquire from you <laughs> and they do it at night <laughs> not in day time and when they do it at night they have on leather strip and they tie i have seen it and on the end they tie piece of wood which they hold and they ask the criminal to remove his shirt and pants and they hit it with this this is the treatment then of course it is very painful then they give him a break Mm-hmm. says okay now you drink tea <laughs> then they call him king <laughs> this is the methodology otherwise these thieves they and these criminals they will never vomit out what is inside then when they are beaten 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 sometimes they hang them upside down also so in between they give them a break so material world is also like that that maya is beating us all the time in between little break for tea mm. and then she again catches and again until and unless you say okay i want to hear krishna katha please leave me so otherwise there is no relief from this material world only relief is when one takes shelter of lord krishna therefore krishna says sarv dharman parityajya mam ekam sharanam raja and tvam sarv patanti moksha sharanam raja so therefore vidura is saying that i am very you know feeling very pitiable on these people why they don't want to hear after all everybody is hearing something as he says he says if they don't hear krishna katha then also they will hear something else so what is that they are hearing he says yesam ayur vritha vad gati smriti nam then they are hearing some other talk mundane talks so many people killed got killed here this fight there this war there this accident this rape case all these stories you hear all the time and people are spending hours and hours you tell them to hear some krishna katha they will say i have no time <laughs> so time is eating up their life he says shinoti devo animishastu yesham ayu their life is being swallowed by time and it is very interesting that time has many names here it is called animisha time is usually called kala but here the name which is used for time is animisha nimisha means blinking animisha means one who does not blink so time does not blink means he is very very careful we cannot fool time if somebody is blinking when he blinks maybe he can do something but time no blinking that means he is not going to leave anybody so he says shinoti devo animishastu yesham ayu 
So time is eating the lifespan of all these people who are engaged in vrithavad. So many times people are having unnecessarily arguments. Friends are having arguments. Husband and wife are having arguments for some stupid things. They have no meaning. You go to parties and people are having argument about something. This is called vrithavad. Useless talk. No meaning. There is nothing which comes out of it. After that you get tired, you go and sleep. Or you become angry, upset. And then your heart is burning and you are thinking, I am going to teach this guy a lesson next time. What does he think of himself? <coughs> so, vritha vada gati. So, their talks are useless and their activities are also useless. Because what do they gain? Ultimately, they die. And what do they take with them? So they, everybody is born naked and comes empty hand and goes empty handed. No bank balance goes with us. No credit card. <laughs> so Bhagavatam says that you have to go, you have to die and it is a journey. And usually when you travel, you don't travel without money, isn't it? Wherever you travel, you take some money with you, credit card. So you say you have to travel. So do you have a credit card? No. So what will you eat? You will starve. So he says you better make some credit by doing bhakti. That is the credit. Because that only goes with you. Everything else remains here. Real Western Union. Yes. <laughs> Western Union, Eastern This is Eastern Union. Eastern. <laughs> Western Union is about dollars. Eastern Union is about devotion. <laughs> so, you become a member of this union. Eastern Union. Yoga means also union. Yes. And <coughs> Vritha Vada Gati Smriti Nam. He says that materialistic people, their talks are useless, their activities are useless, and then they remember useless things. Because whatever they talk, whatever they do, that's what they remember. They dream about these things. And not only they dream at night, they also dream during daytime. But most people are half asleep. They don't know where they are, what they are doing, where they are going. So because they are half asleep during daytime, then they are half awake at night. They neither are fully awake nor they have full sleep. So they remain in this dream state. is the situation of people and the only solution is if one takes to hearing Krishna Gatha which is very easy so Sri Vishnu Chakrati Thakur he comments Atra Hari Kathayam Trividha Janaha Sambhavanti he says there are three types of people in relationship to Harikatha or hearing about Krishna. Number one, Shraddha Dhana. There are people who have faith and they like to hear. <coughs> they relish hearing. It is tonic for them. So, as Kapila Dev says that when devotees meet Bhavanti, Hrutkarna, Rasayano, Katha then they talk about Krishna and that is like a rasayana, it is a tonic for the heart. So their heart becomes very strong. Then Ashraddha Dhana. There are second type of people who do not have faith in hearing. 
but they are not against it. They are not interested, but they say, okay, if you want to hear, it's all right. Then there are third type of people who are called Vimukha. <coughs> they are against it. They don't like you know. so These are the three types of people. And he will describe all three of them. So he says, Mat katha shravnada uva shraddha yavanna jayate jat shraddho mat katha su ityadav tatha pratipadvishya manatvat. Sri Bhagavat Mate Bhaktau Parama Purushar Thatvena Vishwanta Shraddha Dhana Uchyante So who are the people who are called faithful or who possess faith? What does really faith mean? Anybody can say what does faith mean? What does it mean that we to have faith in Harikatha? That I hear Harikatha and I will attain Sound. Yes. So he says, according to Srimad Bhagavatam, faith means to have this belief that bhakti, devotion to Krishna is the highest goal I can achieve. If I have this belief, then I have faith. According to Bhagavata. According to some other book, it may be something else. Tavat karmani kurvita na nirvidyate yavata mat kathasra unadava shraddha yavanna jayate. Because in Bhagavata, Krishna himself says that one should engage in fruitive activities until one attains shraddha or faith in hearing my katha. After that, there is no need to engage in fruitive activities. So that means this is the unique achievement in human life. This is a big revolution in one's life if one has attained faith. It is not an ordinary thing, this faith. It is very sublime. And Krishna himself is Harikatha. So, jata shraddha mat kathasu. And then another is says that one who has got shraddha in my katha, then he should not pursue other goals in life. Purushartha sadhana matrat kvena vishvasanto ashraddha dhana. The second class of people are those who think that by performing devotion, I will attain other goals of life. As Krishna says that there are four types of people who worship me. Chatur Vida Bhajante Mahu, Jana Sukriti Narjuna, Artho Jigyasu Artharthi, Jnani Cha Bhartasha. So some people worship Krishna because they want money. Some people worship because they want some enjoyment or they want some high post or some people worship, they want liberation. So these are the type of people, they are called, that they actually don't have faith in Harikatha. Because real faith is that I only want bhakti and nothing else. So that means they use bhakti for something else. For some lower, lower purpose. So they are called faithless people. Bhaktya Vinayeva Purusharthan Shishadheshwa Vimukha And then there is a third class of people who think that they will become successful without bhakti. The second class of people think that they will become successful in their goal by performing bhakti only, not otherwise. So they perform bhakti but not to attain bhakti. But the third type of people are those who think that bhakti is not necessary and if I have to become a yogi or jnani or great businessman or anything, I can become without devotion. These are called vimukha. They are actually against devotion. Prathman sabhinandana muktva dhutyan alunghya tratyan sochati. 
So he spoke about the first type of people in the previous verse when he said that when their faith increases then they become very blissful and they remember Krishna all the time. That was the first type of people. He did not talk about the second type of people. Then he talks of third type of people. He says that they are very pitiable. So these are the third class of people. Suddha bhaktair ye shochya so pure devotees, they feel pitiable on such people. Swarga mokshadi sadhana ratas tairapi sochyan. And pure devotees, they feel pitiable even to those people who are using devotion to attain some material aim, even up to liberation. So they are called pitiable. And the third type of people are called pitiable, even of the pitiable. And even those who are considered as pitiable by pure devotees, they will consider them pitiable. Because the second class of people will consider these as pitiable, who are thinking that without bhakti they can become successful in anything. Because without devotion there is no success on any path. And one who does not know this, he is called Shocha Shocha. Pitiable among the pitiable. So Bhakti Rahit Karma Gyan Yogadi Mato Ahem Sochami Tatra Hetu Avida. It says those who are performing the Karma Yoga, Gyan Yoga, Ashtang Yoga without Bhakti, I am really lamenting for them. This is what Vidura is saying. Tatra Hetu, what is the reason for that? Avidaha. He says they are ignorant. Why? Sastrani Adhitya Pi Tat Tat Pariyam Avidusha. That even after studying scriptures, they had not understood the meaning of it. Sastrani Adhitya Pi Bhavanti Murkha. Even after studying scripture, they are foolish, ignorant. They do not know the essence. Why? Because they do not take to devotion to Krishna. Hare riti aghena prachin arvachin mahapradhena yuhetun. And why it happens? Because these people must have committed offense in past life or in this particular life. And that offense is what keeps them away from devotion. And that becomes an obstacle to bhakti. But time is not going to spare them. So he says, Animishaha kala nanute api swasva matasthapane nana vada nana gati nana smithya adi manta sabhayam pragalbante tatra sabhikkarana. He says, time is going to eat up their life. So if somebody says that what if they are engaged in some other pursuits and they also talk their philosophy, they also perform some activities and they also remember their goal and they may even have debates with other people so he says that is useless because it does not make them attain their goal material and there is no question of anything spiritual so I will stop here For example, these uh, people, no, the second class of people, mm -hmm. they they uh, use bhakti, let's say, no, to mm -hmm. go to that uh, in their own goal. Mm -hmm. So, what is it? I mean, they use bhakti for obtaining their own goals. They are separate or from the pleasure of God or something. But still, they are, they are uh, performing some type of uh, activities. They are related to the bhakti. Yeah, they perform sakam bhakti. Sakam bhakti. So, mm, they don't exclude God from their lives. Mm. So, what is the offense then? Then they. Yeah, there is no offense. Only thing is that they are using something high class to attain something low class. Yes. Something like stupid. 
It's like you have an aeroplane and instead of flying with the aeroplane, you are driving it on the road. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay, they, they, they don't go for the, for the best result, they just... Be, so you're driving in your aeroplane and making accidents. <laughs> <laughs> I want to go back to the point of the um, processes of sadhana that you mentioned earlier on. Considering the flickering nature of the mind, especially in this age of Kali Yuga, what is the best process of sadhana? The best process is, as he has said, hearing. hearing. And Tasmat Sarvat Manabharat Sarvat Sarvada Srotavya Kirti Tavya and chanting. Hearing and chanting is the best. Even when the mind is unsteady? Yeah. It will become steady after some time. Yeah. If you hear properly and if you chant properly, it will become stabilized. Just remember the Gita <coughs> when Krishna says to Arjuna, everything is dark or dead. Yes, Kalo Asana. You also mentioned the connection between devotion and religion.